welcome to the Great Shrimp Shoal. Today we'll be revisiting the forest to check on how things are doing with the Jade Cherry Shrimp. And we'll stop over in the new tank to see how the bamboo shrimp are getting along in their first few days. Please remember to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification icon so that you know when the next shrimpy video drops. Welcome! I've been getting clearer and clearer pictures of the bamboo shrimps and their fans that they use in order to feed themselves, and it is truly a remarkable feat of evolution. It's so interesting to look at the various appendages and how they're different between the bamboo shrimp and the cherry shrimp, and we'll revisit this a little bit more later in the next episode, but right now I'd like to get back to the forest because things have kicked into a high gear. After a bunch of cleanings, which included tons of water changes, cleaning the sponge filters and vacuuming the substrate, who knows how many times, things have started to clear up a little bit and I've started to see that the baby shrimp are still around, but I don't think that they're in the numbers that I would have expected them to be with the parents having in between 15 to 30 eggs a piece. It's a really difficult process to understand because the babies have to have a food source which is dependable for them to feed on and the algae bloom could have thrown that into disarray. Now that everything has started to clear up, I've been able to spot some of the shrimp that live closer to the inside of the tank more often and tend to clump around the rotola rotundifolia that grows in the center of the tank. This has actually allowed me to see that uh, some of the shrimp that I've been missing for the last couple weeks are actually all right, including my ghost shrimp, which is one of my favorites, and I am glad to see that he is... Well, he's doing what he does at the back of the tank on the moss, and I suspect that he's been hiding back there ever since the algae bloom started. So, as things start to clear up, I'm sure that he's going to be happy to roam around. During the worst parts of the algae bloom, I did the most filming at the edge of the tank, which I'm sure you could understand with the inner portions being obscured. And what I noticed was that the planaria and the detritus worms were running amok. If anything, they had increased their populations two or three fold during the algae bloom. So I bought a planaria trap to try and see if I couldn't get some of them to scoot in there and I could dispose of them without doing anything to harm the shrimp with any chemicals or anything else. And I can say this for sure. It doesn't harm the shrimp. But does it catch planaria? That I'm still on hold about because I don't know whether or not the planaria that I have are attracted to the bait, which is just standard fish flakes that I've used. I thought I saw some planaria edging their way into the trap the first few days I was using it, but after a couple days when you'd think that the food would be the most enticing as it starts to decompose, it seemed like they didn't bother going anywhere near it. I am much more used to my ghost shrimp being way more active than this, so I can't help but worry a little bit that the algae bloom, or maybe his ability to feed, has had some sort of negative effect on his health. We'll just have to see how he fares for the next few hours and days. As I said, I've been using water changes to clear up the algae bloom, and it has been the most effective after removing and cleaning the sponge filters and removing a large portion of the moss. But I can't change all the water, meaning 100%, so I have to do it in batches, and I've done it at a 30% each time, and it'll take a few more, I think, to clear up the remainder of the algae. But, it seems, among all this, the ghost shrimp has become even more lethargic. He is not at all like his usual self. 
we'll have to wait out the night and see how the water changes and the food has affected his health. This death was unlike any of the others that I've had before. And I can't quite say if that's because this is a different type of shrimp and it just acts differently. But losing my ghost shrimp was probably the hardest loss that has hit me in recent memory. Honestly, he still looks amazing even in this stillness and it's a huge loss to the community and my tank to have lost him in this way. It looks like it's another molting issue because it looks as though his carapace along his back has actually separated successfully, but it doesn't look as though he was able to fully make it out of his shell in time. If this was in fact an inability to molt properly, it could be related to a mineral level being in one direction or in the other, and I know that that is ambiguous, but the water could be too hard or too soft. I haven't lost very many shrimp to the actual algae bloom, so I can't say that that has been an issue that led to this shrimp's death. I feel more comfortable saying that this is directly related to the water hardness level, and I will look to figure out how I can fix that soon to prevent more deaths from happening. In the meantime, I check over the anatomy of the shrimp and you can clearly see where he doesn't fit into the carapace where he normally would have filled it out. And that seems to coincide with an inability to molt. If a shrimp is also stressed, which could have been a product of the algae bloom, they may not be able to properly get themselves out of a successful molting in the first place. It just may be too much energy that they cannot expend. For most species of shrimp and decapods, including other crustaceans, a successful molting comes from a split along their back. From there, they're able to pull themselves out of that hole, including all of their appendages, the antenna, pleopods, and everything else just like a human coming out of a wetsuit. That's the best analogy I've been able to find so far. It really is like opening a zipper along the back, although it's horizontal, not vertical, and then they pull themselves out. This female jade cherry shrimp actually has some kind of fungus growth along her pleopods where she would normally keep her eggs and it's been hard for me to get a good picture as to whether or not these are actually eggs which are covered in fungus or if she has a fungal growth. So I've taken to treating her and her alone with some methylene blue. During the algae bloom, the Rotala rotundifolia has actually put out a larger number of runners and what they do is they throw out these roots into the substrate and they hold on for dear life. And the few that I had originally planted have started to snake around the rest of the tank, including along the sides, backs, and down the middle very efficiently. It is listed as a weed which grows very well in a wide range of conditions in Eastern Asia and it is clear to see why it does a great job at using its roots off of shoots that stretch up and then horizontally as well. I think that when I trim I may end up taking out more than half of the rotala that is currently in there. Its roots and the above ground plant structure do a better job at inhibiting the growth of the hygrophilia polysperma than I could have ever hoped for, but they themselves are a voracious plant when it comes to growing and covering the substrate. Just to give you an example, the Rotala rotundifolia that I planted in this tank has spread from just six small clumps that I planted originally. The Hygrophilia polysperma can grow after being buried and dead for a long time, but it usually keeps to itself and just grows out of one shoot 
until it eventually flowers and produces seeds, which then grow other plants. The rotala, on the other hand, can grow after clump after clump, and it spreads like wildfire. Now that the algae bloom has mostly gone and resolved itself after tons of water changes, I can show you guys another thing which has caused me an even greater amount of worry, especially after noticing them in multiple places in at least two of the tanks that I have. This is a new type of planaria, at least I haven't seen it yet before amongst any of the tanks in the shoal and it appears much longer than the planaria that I have seen in the other tanks, and at least twice as thick. It has a spade-like head, and it moves very quickly across the tank glass. Most of these planaria use tiny hairs along their entire length of their body in order to move, and this one is no different. You can kind of see it on the edge of the body here with a backlight. Observing them and seeing how they act and eat and seeing what they prey on might be interesting if not for the fact that I don't know if they would affect the baby shrimp at all. And they are known in certain capacities to be parasites which can get under the shell of a shrimp and cause serious damage and often fatal results even amongst adult shrimp. To make matters worse, they are an invertebrate, so a lot of the things that might kill them and take out some of their population could also affect the shrimp, and might affect the baby shrimp more than the adults, but either way, it is a risk that I cannot take currently with the babies newly hatched in the forest. Luckily, none of these specimens were found amongst the forest. I've only spotted detritus worms and regular planaria there. I already miss my ghost shrimp, and it hasn't even been a few hours since he's passed. I'll have to get another pair of ghost shrimp or more in order to replace his niche within the forest. He was an active member and an agile swimmer. He never ceased to entertain and delight the people that watched him. If I can take any solace in his death, it is the fact that a lot of the mystery as to what is affecting these shrimp is now being slowly removed. I do believe I've figured out exactly what kind of water quality issues have been affecting their ability to molt, and I think that I'm ready to put everything back in balance and give these shrimp a real fighting chance. Thank you guys for showing up and helping me to get through this troublesome time. We're gonna get to the other tank next week, but for now, it's time to let the forest rest and recuperate because it certainly needs to get some of its strength back. Please like and subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications so that you know when the next video drops. And as always, I hope that you have some sweet shrimpy dreams before we meet next.